to my kitchen my name is blessing and today i would like to show you the simplest most straightforward way to cook nigerian party jollof rice well if you're from nigeria then you probably have heard the saying that if jollof rice doesn't get burnt then it is not jollof rice well today i am here to squash that saying because you actually can achieve the perfect nigerian party jollof rice without getting it burnt besides burnt food comes with health disadvantages and unnecessary wastage and you will be amazed at the result if you follow my recipe so let's get cooking i'll start by listing the ingredients needed for jollof rice indian basmati rice red bell peppers chopped tomatoes red onions garlic scotch bonnets sunflower oil or groundnut oil bay leaves thyme curry powder maggi cubes salt tomato puree chicken stock or beef stock and butter start by washing and chopping your ingredients I use lots of bell peppers because they are highly rich in vitamin C. Blend the ingredients together, adding little or no water because there is already lots of water in the canned tomatoes. Blend the mixture until you get a smooth paste. Pour the blended mixture into a ceramic pan and cook till all the water evaporates, as you can see here. Now place an empty pan on medium heat. Add sunflower oil or granite oil and heat up for a few minutes without overheating the oil. The amount of oil you use depends on the quantity of your cooked tomato mixture. Slice some onions and pour into the hot oil. Stir fry for a few minutes without the onions getting brown. Add the bay leaves. Remember, this is optional. However, it gives the jollof rice a special scent. Add the spices and seasonings. Frying your spices and seasonings in oil intensifies the flavor of your food without having to use too much of it. The quantity of spices and seasonings you use depends on the quantity of your cooked tomato mixture. Add tomato puree. This gives the jollof rice its rich red color. Mix well and allow to fry. Remember to always use a wooden spoon as opposed to a metal spoon because a metal spoon damages the protective layer on your pan causing your food to burn more rapidly. Now pour in the cooked sauce and continue to fry until the consistency becomes very dry. Once this is the case, set the pan aside to cool. It's now time to rinse the raw rice. So here is the top secret for preparing jollof rice without it getting burnt. Ta-da! An electric rice cooker. Using conventional pots produces a layer of burnt rice at the bottom, which is a nuisance to clean, but an electric rice cooker will let the rice cook correctly and evenly. 
Rinse the rice in very warm water in order to get rid of some of the excess starch. Some people parboil their rice before cooking, but parboiling rice is something I never do because it makes the jollof rice become soggy and that is exactly what we don't want. Jollof rice is supposed to be well cooked yet grainy. Repeat the rinsing process at least two more times. Once you're done rinsing, pour the fried sauce into the rice and stir. Make sure the sauce is enough to cover the entire rice so that you are not able to see any white rice at all. Gently mix to ensure the sauce is evenly distributed and that all the rice blends in so that you have a mixture that is very rich in color. Then add your chicken stock. You can also use beef stock. This is a matter of preference. However, the choice of stock you use determines the flavor your jollof rice will have. I personally love chicken flavored jollof rice, while some people also use a combination of chicken and beef stock. So like I said, it's all about what you like. Now place the pot into the electric panel and start cooking. It is very important for the content of the pot to be at room temperature before you start cooking the rice. If this is not the case, the panel might prematurely switch off even before your rice is properly cooked. Leave to cook for about 15 to 20 minutes depending on the quantity of your rice. After the time has elapsed, check the rice. At this point, the rice should be half boiled and a lot of the liquid that was in there before should now be dried out as you can see here. Cover the pot with foil paper in order to retain the heat in the pot and then cook further for about 10 minutes depending on the quantity of rice you are cooking. After this time, check up on your rice again and taste for softness. The rice should be completely soft at this point. If your rice is still not soft at this stage, don't be tempted to add more water to it because jollof rice needs steam to cook and not water. Simply replace the foil to keep the steam in the rice for about 5 to 10 more minutes depending on the quantity of your rice. Well, my jollof rice is ready so it's time for me to mix it thoroughly. Remove the bay leaves while stirring the jollof rice. Add some butter in the center of the rice. The purpose of butter in jollof rice is to give it a bit of moisture so you don't need too much of it. And voila! The jollof rice is ready and can now be served with any side dish of your choice like vegetable salad or fried plantains. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Well, if you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I will be coming your way again with lots of exotic delicacies. So if you have any question or a request for a particular dish you'd like me to prepare next time, just write me a comment below. Bye! delicious.